Right. So before I get started, can I just get a thumbs up? Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Is that the running? Yeah. All right, well, hi guys, my name is Asse Inshom. I'm an enrollment services manager for the University of Pittsburgh. And uh, first and foremost, thank you guys for having me tonight. It's a nice program. I'm just so thrilled that you guys are interested in learning more about Pitt. Uh, as an alum, I witnessed firsthand that uh, Pitt education is a special type of experience. So with that being said, I wanna make sure I leave enough time for you guys' Q and A's. I also have Josh Rosa with me. He's a Pitt Pathfinder. He's a tremendous resource when it comes to being a campus ambassador. So if you have questions concerning student life or just campus experiences, he will also talk a little bit near the end to kind of share his experiences on, at Pitt. But uh, moving along, I just want to share a little bit about the university. Uh, we are a major research institution located in Western Pennsylvania. And um, for people who haven't had the chance to visit Pitt, uh, we're relatively about a four hour drive uh, for people located in the DMV. But I, when I talk to students, I always like to make note that we are a research institution because it really helps shape who we are as a university and it really helps shape uh, how students receive uh, their education on campus. So in, in addition to traditional learning uh, experiences uh, at, at Pitt, such as you know, lecture, uh, lessons plans and lectures and one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions, uh, Pitt really prides itself on innovation, discovery, research, and diversity. So our students have uh, tremendous access to some of our uh, laboratories and research facilities, and they're able to conduct hands-on research as early as their spring semester of their first year. And the great thing about research is that it's not just conducted within the sciences or the science major, it applies to all of our fields. Within our curriculum, we have over 100 different major minors and certificates. Relax, to conduct, like I said, conduct projects uh, with uh, professionals within the respective field. And I will say, in generally speaking, students are very much encouraged to explore new passions and interests. Uh, as I mentioned, I am an alum, and when I first enrolled at Pitt, I actually uh, came along as undecided within our Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. And I remember as my freshman year, I was really exposed to a wide range of uh, academic departments, everything from neuroscience, uh, psychology, uh, you really kind of just exposed to kind of just find your way. And if there's one thing I'd like to share with uh, rising students and rising seniors is that at Pitt, as an undergrad, you definitely have time. Uh, we have so many different academic tracks in place and we have so many different tools and resources that we want students to capitalize on. So we understand that coming to Pitt, coming to college is a transition in itself. So we really want you to uh, fully engage yourself on campus and take everything that Pitt has to offer. So uh, I know students can at times be a little stressed when it comes to the college selection process and the undergraduate experience, but please know uh, we, at Pitt, we really want to be supportive to make sure you find your way, so to speak. And by doing that, we want to ensure that you have enough time to find your way. And in this next slide, it's just a, a few key takeaways uh, when it comes to majors and our student body. Uh, as you can see here, some of our more popular majors are definitely within the science fields or the pre-health track. We have six teaching hospitals on campus. So as you can imagine, a lot of our pre-med uh, tracks, our nursing students, are able to get great clinical sessions and clinical experience in real life uh, healthcare environments. Uh, our student body is a little over 19,000 undergraduate students. Uh, within the DMV, we have over around 1,200 uh, 1200 students. So more times than not, you definitely will meet someone who knows where you're from, so to speak. I think for Pitt, uh, it's a great compromise for students in the DMV, just the fact that it's close to home, uh, but also you can also kind of branch out and explore a new city and kind of, kind of grow individually and professionally. And uh, I will mention this later on, but within our curriculum, we have 18 guaranteed admission programs. And this is great for rising seniors uh, who are applying to the university who have kind of a better grasp of what they want to pursue professionally. So whether it's uh, med school or if you're interested in getting your MBA in business, we do have these guaranteed admissions uh, uh, programs available for students to apply. And we feel that it generally helps students uh, transition to college. It's just the fact that they know that if they are accepted to one of these guaranteed admission programs, they can just focus on being an undergraduate student because their seat will be reserved for them uh, in their respective graduate school. So I, I just mentioned previously, we have a fairly large student body, over 19,000 uh, 19, undergraduate students. But I think uh, what I really enjoy about working for Pitt is that our Office of Student Affairs really has a good grasp and pulse of the campus. Uh, we have over 600 Pitt clubs and organizations. So students have ample opportunity to collaborate with each other and other professionals. Uh, from an athletic standpoint, we are a member of the ACC. So we play pretty competitive teams. Uh, sporting events are definitely a huge spectacle. Uh, during our home football games, we actually 
uh, transport the entire student body. Our home games are actually played at Heinz Field, which is in downtown Pittsburgh, where the Steelers play. So it's just a huge spectacle. It's a huge, huge event. Pittsburgh's the type of city where you get all four seasons. So as you can imagine, during that September, October months, it's so nice out. And so it's nice in the fact that we have uh, network, uh, we have alumni and a lot of networking opportunities for students to come back for those games as well. And like I said, it's just a nice day on Saturday. This nice out. It's, it's just hard to, hard to beat that uh, type of environment and atmosphere. But uh, I think uh, one thing that we all would love to have is some type of return to normalcy. And I think uh, in the coming years, I think the Office uh, of Study Abroad will definitely have our rise of students uh, interested in this program. We have over 350 different programs ranging in 75 different countries. And what's great about Study Abroad is that our the department and our staff are very hands-on and they're really aware of the different academic tracks that students are pursuing. So if, for example, if you're an engineering student and you're trying to take advantage of our co-op uh, opportunities as well. You can meet with their department, talk to their advisors, and they can figure out the best uh, best plan, so to speak, to make sure that you're not taking away from your academic timeline. And last but not least, we also have a career uh, advising center. Uh, this is a great tool for students that uh, you can kind of work on your uh, career mock skills, such as mock, in, uh, mock interviews, uh, resume building. Uh, within this program, if you satisfy all the requirements, we have an internship guarantee in which uh, the university will guarantee that you will receive some type of internship during your four years of undergraduate studies. Uh, during my tenure uh, as an undergrad, I actually received my internship with the Pittsburgh Steelers when I was in the business school. So I really credit the foundation uh, that I created, that I formed at the university because it really helped me position myself and make myself a valuable candidate with employers. Um, but moving along, when it comes to just the workforce, I think one of the true uh, biggest attractions about Piss campus is our physical location. Uh, we are located roughly three miles from downtown Pittsburgh, uh, an area that is really considered an industry leader in manufacturing, technology, healthcare, and education. Uh, students across all academic uh, settings and fields are able to secure competitive employment in forms of internships, co-ops, work study, clinical sessions, and research projects. So I hope you guys kind of hope I kind of can take away from this is that Pitt's campus is truly isn't an ordinary campus town. Uh, the city of Pittsburgh is composed of about 90 neighborhoods, and our Oakland or, and our Pittsburgh campus is located in the town of Oakland. But uh, if you ever get the chance to actually visit our campus or the city of Pittsburgh, I think it will become very apparent to you that uh, there's a sense of Pitt community and Pitt pride uh, wherever you go, wherever you travel. And uh, this tall building that you see uh, here to your left is the Cathedral of Learning. For those of you who do not know, the Cathedral of Learning uh, is actually the second uh, tallest university building in the world. So it's kind of like a real, real life Hogwarts if you ever get a chance to tour inside. And uh, as I mentioned, I think Pitt really prides itself on research and diversity. And a cool theme about the, the cathedral is that uh, on multiple floors, each room is designated different country of origin. So it's nice when this uh, classes aren't in session or if it's the evening, students can kind of take the time to kind of tour around the cathedral line and tour the different rooms and see the, you know, the different ethnicity and different diversity that the university is definitely trying to promote and embrace. So yeah, continue off the fact that we're, we're really not just like a general or uh, any type of common campus town. Uh, as I mentioned, um, we also have professional sports teams. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, the Sailors, we also have the Pirates, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the, uh, sorry, I can't remember the name on top of my head, uh, the Penguins, Pittsburgh Penguins. So we have three professional teams, I believe with all within the last decade have actually played in the playoffs. So obviously we have a lot of tools and resources on campus for students to capitalize off of, but in addition, you know, you have downtown Pittsburgh, which is basically right in your backyard. Uh, it's a 10 minute uh, bus ride. And the great thing about being a Pitt student is that you have a ID and with your ID you can use all of the free public transportation. So if you're a type of student who's working at internship, you can easily, you know, balance your studies and get to downtown Pittsburgh to handle those responsibilities as well. On top of that, we have the city of Pittsburgh has a very rich uh, performing arts scene, everything from museums, orchestras, and symphonies. So with our Pitt Arts Initiative, students actually can receive free or discounted ticketing to attend these type of shows. And exclusively with our free arts initiative, 
Uh, students can also receive like uh, special behind the scenes Q and A's with directors and performers and things of that nature. Uh, I believe the last time I was on campus, which was in November, I saw A Bronx Tale, which is an old Robert De Niro movie, if you guys may or may not know. But just things like that. I mean, like I said, the city of Pittsburgh, there's so much to explore and we really kind of want students to make Pittsburgh their, uh, their new home, so to speak. So uh, if you ever get the chance, please try to go out and kind of explore everything the city has to offer. And but just a quick uh, question. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I think we're stuck on the first slide. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. One second. I think you might just need to go into like the slideshow mode and it'll be. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no problem. Uh, let me stop this one second. Sorry, guys. Working now? Is it? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, cool. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, so, oops, let me go back one. So yeah, like I was just saying, this is just an actually just an action shot of downtown Pittsburgh. This is actually the city of Mount Washington. So as you can see, it's just a very nice city. The city of Pittsburgh is the type of city we get all four seasons. And uh, I mean, as, as an adult, I lived in New York and DC, and I can say with 100% confidence that uh, the city of Pittsburgh is the most affordable city I've lived in. So students uh, who live there can definitely afford to live there and uh, balance their social life as well. Uh, and then this next video is just kind of, a, kind of shows a little bit of the sentiment of student life and how it is to be a Pitt student. Can you guys hear the sound? get to the University of Pittsburgh, you enter into a world of new possibilities, new opportunities, and new experiences. But what you'll find you have the most of, though, is time. See, there will always be time in your classes, or time that you need to study, but there will always be the chance for you to do more. What are you going to do with that time? When you look back at your college experience, what you learn in the classroom is only the surface, but how you spend your time outside of it, that's your college experience. Those are your defining moments, and that time is where the University of Pittsburgh seeks to provide the best collegiate experience in the world. When you get to campus, it is the time to explore and find the groups and organizations you want to give your time to for the next four years. What are you seeking? You'll take time to connect on your residence hall floor, in the classroom, and with the campus that you now call home. You'll find thousands of students involved in hundreds of organizations, each making their time count. When you find your organizations, there will be time to follow. But there's that special moment when it's time to take the lead. You'll shape other student experiences because you'll know that others have taken the time to shape yours. And when the time comes and that competitive impulse hits, you can find others who want to join in. Whether you want to bulk up, slim down, or push yourself to the limits, there's time for it all. You'll find there is never a lack of things to see. Plays, concerts, shows, performances, great works of art. There's always new parts of the community to discover because our city is our campus. You'll learn what it means to give your time, what it means to build a community. At Pitt, you're never on your own. Beyond the classroom, there is an entire community working to help you have the best experience possible. From specific housing to the food you eat, they're working to make it convenient and simple 
making this city feel like home. And if you experience some hard times, Pitt has the support you need. There are people to turn to when you miss home, when you can't face that next test, are too sick to get out of bed in the morning, or need that extra hand to get through classes. There will come a time when you realize this is all building, building towards something more. The time you're putting in a pit will lead you somewhere new by seizing the opportunities that surround you. When you come over the hill on Forbes and you see the cathedral rising up and welcoming you home, you'll know the best thing you ever spent at Pitt was your time. So in the remainder of my time, I'd just like to talk a little bit more about our admission cycle and our class profile. All right, so as I mentioned, we have a little over 19,000 undergraduate students. Our freshman class is a little over 4,100 uh, students. Uh, but within the admissions committee, we are very excited uh, just the fact that our most recent class size, one of our larger, larger class sizes in recent dates. So we're very excited for the incoming class coming to campus. Uh, I always like to make note, uh, all of our students begin their undergraduate studies as undecided. Uh, so we do that just because every major has uh, required prerequisites and general educational requirements that must be completed before you officially declare that major. But as you apply to the University of Pittsburgh, there are five entry level schools that you can apply within. Uh, those being the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, our Swanson School of Engineering, our College of Business Administration, our School of Computing Information, and then our School of Nursing. And each school has their own relative profile in terms of test scores, uh, test scores, GPA, and the physical class size. Uh, for example, the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences is our largest class. It has the most diverse major selection. And overall, I think the pit really prides itself on the arts and the humanities. Uh, we really want all students to kind of experience the, the humanities. And for me personally, that's one of the reasons why I actually became a double major. I graduated from the business school and our teacher school of arts and sciences. But based off, like I was mentioning my freshman year when I was exposed to a lot of those general educational requirements, you really are exposed to different, uh, different departments and different academic interests. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to become a double major uh, myself. But uh, moving along, uh, for the rising seniors in the room, there's a few dates that are important to remember. Our application cycle or application window will start on August 1st, which is kind of around the corner. It's kind of scary, but it's, it's almost here, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's important to know that at Pitt, we implement a rolling admissions policy, meaning that our applicants are informed of their admission status on a first come, first serve basis once we have received all of their application material. And that material is everything you see listed here in this white box. However, we do have deadlines in place as, uh, for like, our merit-based scholarships and for our guaranteed admissions programs. Uh, we do that so that we can ensure that our applicants have enough time to be properly reviewed by our scholarship and admissions committee. So it's always in the student's best interest to apply early. Uh, I just say that because generally speaking, hypothetically, uh, if a student was to apply in January, uh, by that point, more than half our seats are taken within our our schools. And in addition, by January, uh, the university is preparing to release some of our financial aid packages to our early applicants. So if the university is, def if the university is in this consider one of your top choices, I would very much encourage you to apply early. Uh, the university really tries to ensure that students can take the initiative and be proactive during the application process. And speaking of which, uh, there's three ways to apply to Pitt, uh, those being the Common App, uh, the Coalition App, and also uh, through our website, the Pitt App which is available at ofa.pit.edu. Uh, so we have the application and that will also include the application fee. Uh, the next item will be the academic record, which can take form as a transcript 
or the self-reported academic record, which is known as, known as the SAR. And here at Pitt, we really encourage students to complete the SAR just because it helps expedite the review process. It helps the student receive a quicker admission decision. Essentially, the SAR is an official document that is a listing of all the completed grades, or completed courses and the corresponding grades that have been completed for either high school or college credit. So as you can imagine, uh, as I alluded to earlier, it really helps uh, expedite the review process. The student can self-report these grades, and then instead of the student contacting their advisor and their advisor sending us their official transcript, the student can do it themselves, and as a result, can receive a, a quicker admission decision. Uh, the next item will be the SAT or the SAT test scores. At Pitt, we accept both. And the cool thing is that we actually also accept the best combined score. So for example, if you are applying within our Swanson School of Engineering and you notice that your test scores may, may be a little off of the class profile, uh, you may, uh, may want to consider retaking the test because not only does that demonstrate to the admissions committee that you're taking the initiative and being proactive with the admissions process, but also shows an upward trend when it comes to your performance. And here at Pitt, uh, the admissions committee does take note of upward trend when it comes to test scores and uh, grades as well. And last but not least, uh, it's quite common for students to reach out to me and kind of ask and express their uh, strong interest in Pitt, and they usually ask, what can I do to kind of express that? Uh, there's multiple ways, but I always tell students that a great way is to, a, to connect with the university. Some of you guys are doing that at this very moment, so connecting with the university is always your best bet, whether it's uh, virtually or face-to-face. -face. Uh, secondly, will definitely be those short answer essays. Uh, Obviously, your test scores and your grades, uh, grades will reflect your academic rigor and performance, but it's your short answer essay really gives us a better grasp of your insight, your past experiences, and how you see the world. Uh, here at Pitt, we really value thinkers, doers, and builders, and your short answer essay really gives us the first opportunity to get that type of insight. So please, uh, just uh, if you have the opportunity, please uh, uh, put yourself in the best position to fill out that information. And as I mentioned here at Pitt, we really uh, value those thinkers, doers, and builders. We uh, review our application on a holistic basis, meaning that everything that I just mentioned when it comes to the application, your test scores, uh, your transcript, and your short answer essays will all be played in consideration when it comes to the admissions decision. So as your personal territory manager, I would love for us to connect. Uh, if you guys uh, have any further questions, please know I am available. I have my contact information listed here as well, my email and work cell. So free, please feel free to contact me any day of the week. Uh, in addition, I also listed our virtual uh, linkage page. So if you want to receive more information about campus events and potential intended majors, please fill out this link here. We can, the university can officially send you additional information. But with that being said, I would like to pass the floor to Josh Rosen. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he is one of our PIT Pathfinders, and they are a tremendous resource university. So uh, Josh, the floor is all yours. All right. <clears throat> Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Josh. I'm a rising junior at Pitt, um, and I'm a media and professional communications major um, with a digital media certificate. Um, so basically, I got like a list of topics to like go over. Um, so earlier today, I just like wrote down a bunch of notes and I'll kind of just like go over um, the general idea of like student life here, what it's like to be a student and also like a little bit about my experience with Jewish life um, at Pitt. Um, so first of all, when I'm not giving tours with the Pathfinders or in school, um, I'm involved in a bunch of different organizations. Um, I'm the social media chair for Pitt Dance Marathon. So I like run all the social media. So like the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff I'm in charge of. Um, I'm also in a professional business organization called Phi Beta Lambda, and I'm also in a social fraternity. Um, so I keep pretty busy. Um, and as I keep talking, you'll probably see there's like a ton of different clubs and organizations that you can get involved with on campus, um, no matter what you're interested in. Um, okay, so first, I guess what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about my experience with like Jewish life, and then I'll go into like just regular normal campus life stuff. Um, so I really like Jewish life at Pitt because there's a really diverse uh, array of like activities that students can be a part of. Um, I was raised in a I was like, I was raised fully Jewish, um, celebrated all the holidays. I wasn't like super religious. I wasn't like Shomer Shabbat or anything like that. I went to a conservative synagogue, um, but I really only went on like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But coming to Pitt um, has actually allowed me to like connect with my Judaism a lot more, um, just because Hillel and Chabad both run some really great programs. 
Um, and they work like cohesively together, which is really nice. Um, so like for me, I'm someone who likes to do more like hands-on stuff. So um, like chala, we do this thing called chala for hunger, which is really great where you like bake chala every Thursday and the, all the money goes to um, help feed um, people who are in hunger. Um, you can also take classes, participate in like internship programs through Hillel and Chabad. Um, so there's just like a ton of different opportunities um, and like a wide variety of different things to do, which is really nice. Um, so they'll talk more about Jewish life later, but that's personally my experience with Jewish life. Um, I kind of honestly think that there's something for everyone, no matter what you're interested, in, which is really nice. Um, okay, so my... Josh, we just lost your audio. like the no clue spectrum. Um, so I kind of like let my mom lead the way when I was applying, which was really helpful. Um, can you guys hear me by the way? It says my internet's unstable. Now we can, we lost you for a second, but you're okay. back. Okay, what part did you lose me at? Uh, you came back in some about your mom. <laughs> okay, perfect. So yeah, my mom kind of helped me navigate the college process, which was really nice because she had already done it with my older brother. Um, so Pitt was actually the final school I toured. Um, the only thing I knew about college going in was that I wanted to be in or near some sort of big city. Um, so I had gone to Boston, DC, New York, um, Philadelphia, which is where I'm from. And Pitt was the final school I toured. And honestly, I kind of came in with low expectations because I didn't know anything about Pittsburgh. I didn't know anything about the city, um, but I was absolutely blown away when I visited campus. And I will say, I like, I'm not just saying this because I go there, like coming, Josh, we lost your audio again. No. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Now you're back. Okay, sorry. I don't know what's going on with the internet. Um, it's really, Pitt's really great because you get all of like the benefits of like a big state school, but you're also like in a city, which is really cool. Um, and the city just has like a ton to offer. Um, and also something nice specifically about where our campus is located is we're located in a town called Oakland, um, which is right on the outskirts of downtown. So despite the fact that you have the benefit of being in the city of Pittsburgh, you still have your own college town that you can experience, um, which is something that I really like. Um, and it's just like a really great community. Um, our campus is pretty small, so you'll always run into people you know. Um, it's only about 132 acres, so it's like really not that big. Um, so even though we opportunities for students, um, like in terms of even just like having fun, whether that's like going out to dinner with friends, going to museums, going to all of that stuff. Um, and then also just like internships, jobs, things like that. Like, because we're in the city, you have so many opportunities to meet people from different companies, organizations, um, and things like that. So, yeah. Did you guys get all of that? Yeah, almost all of that. We've had a couple of questions come into the chat, mostly uh, related, I said, to your presentation. Um, so, Josh will give you you know, a chance to, you know, wrap up or share any, you know, final thoughts. And then but right before we switch over to Hillel, we'll just ask these couple of, of questions that came through the chat. But if there's anything else you wanted to share. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's kind of all I wrote down. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing all that. Um, also, we had a question about, let me just go back through. Uh, first, uh, I forgot who it was, Shelly asked, um, and obviously there's a lot of speculation on this, but if you could address uh, whether or not you know if and when campus will be open for actual visitors on site. Uh, but maybe you also just want to say a word or two about how uh, the pandemic has, has impacted the process or some, you know, what people might want to be thinking about uh, moving forward. You're muted, sorry. 
All right, perfect. So yeah, uh, first and foremost, the PIC committee can't wait to have students back to campus uh, once it's safe to do so. Obviously at this very moment, we're not uh, having or conducting face-to-face -face visits, but I really give credit to the university and the fact that it has been able to really address the concerns and, and needs of students virtually. So uh, in addition to our virtual engagement team, students can also kind of connect with the university with our YouTube admissions uh, page. But uh, fortunately at this point in time, we don't have the exact date as to when we're gonna uh, open our campus doors for face-to-face -face visits. I imagine ideally some point in July, probably in the next coming two weeks or so, the university will have official wording in regards to face-to-face uh, -face visit and how the campus will look for classes and everything like that. So as, as I mentioned kind of in the presentation, I know everyone's kind of wanting to have some type of normalcy and kind of want to be out and about, but Pitt really wants to make sure that, you know, we take the necessary steps to protect uh, all of our students and faculty and staff members. But uh, just know that you, uh, PISS campus uh, is really at the forefront uh, of, this, uh, of this pandemic. Uh, like I said, when it comes to research and discovery, uh, vaccines and medicine, Pitt really is the forefront and really prides itself on innovation. So you never know uh, what we can discover uh, in the future, but just know that Pitt is ready and really wants to have the students back uh, when the time is right. Awesome, thank you. We're also, Hopeful that all incoming freshmen will have a, a true campus experience in the fall. Of course. Um, we also had a question, if you could just restate, I think uh, we uh, just didn't remember what you said, but someone asked um, if students are admitted by college or to the university. I know you said that students come in undecided, but do they apply to a specific college or to the university? Right. So when you apply, you can apply within one of the five entry level schools. So. As I mentioned, those schools will be the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences, the College of uh, Business, Business Administration, uh, Swanson School of Engineering, the School of Nursing, and the School of Computing Information. If you're undecided you will, uh, and admitted, you will begin your studies within the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences. But I just like to make note that regardless of your intended major or whatever school you apply within, you will start off as undecided, just the fact that you have to complete some of those gen ed requirements and those prerequisites before you can officially declare that major. Cool. Thanks for repeating that. And then finally, we had a question from Amy about whether Pitt gives out merit-based scholarships to out-of-state students. Very much so. So yeah, uh, we very uh, a majority of our students receive some type of scholarship or uh, financial aid packaging, uh, everything from two thousand dollars to full room and board. So if you are a student who's interested in, in attaining merit-based scholarships please apply early. Like I said, it's always in your best interest to apply. The longer you wait, kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage is the fact that our application cycle starts in August. So uh, if you do have the time earlier, it's always better to try to take the initiative and be proactive during the application process. In addition to our scholarships, we also have uh, PIF Funds Me, which is a micro scholarship dashboard. So if you are admitted to university, you can actually access uh, this dashboard and see all the different uh, micro scholarships are available to students in addition to the merit scholarship that the university distributes to students as well. Awesome, super helpful, thank you. Um, now we're excited we're gonna pass the baton over to Carrie and Eli who are gonna talk to us about like the Jewish uh, experience on campus and everything that's available to you as a Jewish student. So Carrie, we'll bump over to you. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Cool. Um, thank you so much for having us on here. Um, I'm really excited to, I like have never watched an admissions video or anything like that. So it, I just got so excited. I just graduated from Pitt um, School of Social Work with my master's in social work. So I went to a school in Chicago for undergrad um, and ended up at Pitt for my master's program. And I just want to touch on the, the aspect of being in a, in a bigger city is so important and such a vital part about being at Pitt. And I think something that really sets us apart. Um, and it's been so great watching our students really grow up in a very um, different and maybe even expedited way than some people who end up at different schools at Big Ten schools. Um, and so I just think that's something that's really important. And it also impacts then our Jewish experience on campus. So a little bit about Hillel. Um, we are the Hillel Jewish University Center. So we actually um, are a home and a space for students, not only at Pitt, but at our neighboring schools, Carnegie Mellon University. Sorry if my virtual background's going in and out. I wanted to be at the building. So you have the front door of the building. Um, 
but we serve students at Carnegie Mellon University, at Duquesne, at Point Park, so a number of other, of other Pittsburgh schools, but primarily we are here for our Pitt and our Carnegie Mellon students. Our building is located in Oakland, right between both campuses. So um, depending on where you're coming from Pitt's campus, um, it's about a five minute walk, I guess, definitely a little bit further. Pitt's campus, it's very hilly, so it could take a little longer to get to our building, but we are not far from campus. And we also have an office located in the student union. So um, those are our official offices. We also have a great partnership with the Starbucks that's on campus, and we have a reserved space just for Hillel. Um, so while I have two formal offices, I feel like you'll mostly find me at Starbucks, um, as I should be there. And um, it's really great that we are, that our programs are not just for the Pitt students, but it's a great way for our students to get to know, our Pitt students get to know the Jewish students all around Pittsburgh. So we try to do as much as possible in our building, which like I said, welcomes students from other schools. So that's just something great is that you're gonna get to know a lot of the Jewish students on Pitt's campus, but also at the neighboring schools. Um, so we have a, a great space, a three-story building that um, typically holds, I'd say like our busiest events will have a couple hundred students for Shabbat every Friday, um, which, will definitely look different next year. Um, I wanna be as transparent as possible. So I'm gonna talk about what Hillel does in a typical year and just know that it's gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna be flexible, but we're actually really excited to help make some really important changes, make sure that what we're doing is something that's gonna be safe for everybody, but that also still gives them that really important Jewish experience in college. So um, when you walk into our building on the first floor, we have what we call an Israel cafe. Um, and that's a great space that we have coffee maker. We always have lots of leftover food and snack avail snacks available. Um, and we have a bunch of tables out there for students to come and chill, do homework. We have meeting spaces. Um, we have a big library where we host our minion every Friday um, and then our staff offices. And then as you move upstairs, we have a couple other rooms that are meant more for programming spaces. So anything from um, movie nights in the building to our different um, student communal group uh, meetings. We have an acapella group that practices in the conference room. So there's always different groups of people using our space at Hillel in really different and awesome ways. I love seeing it. You never know what's gonna be happening when you walk into the building. Um, and then on our third floor is a really big open space with a um, VOD certified kosher kitchen that um, holds, I don't know the, appropriate number and capacity, but typically around 130 students on for Shabbat every Friday, but I know we've held a lot more than that in that space. Um, so it's a really great, it's just a really great place to gather and a great place for the Jewish students at Pitt to feel like they have a home, not only on campus, but a little bit off of campus, which is, I think gets back into that city life. It's really nice that they, you know, even if it's just five minutes up the road, that they start, that the students start to experience Jewish life outside of their family home, outside of their dorm, and in, in places that really help show what it can be um, moving forward for them. So um, that's just about our space. I guess our program offerings, um, I'll start with our Jewish holidays. We have Shabbat in the building every week throughout the school year, except for breaks. Um, that Sometimes will look different. Sometimes Carnegie Mellon will be a part of that. They'll also have their own Shabbats once a, once a month on their campus. Um, we've had Shabbat before as well in the student union, different places on campus, but typically it's gonna be in our building every week. Um, so we'll offer a few different types of service options and then a, a big delicious dinner um, with lots of leftovers afterwards to take home as well. Um, and we have different programs that we offer for the high holidays. Um, which is really special. Uh, my first time really experiencing it a couple of years ago with Pitt. We don't typically offer um, any services out of our building for the high holidays, but we actually link our students up with local congregations. And so that's something that I find to be really special, really unique. Um, and I think it helps a lot of students form really strong relationships with other Jewish community members. Um, so I know that we've sent students before to 
to a certain synagogue and they end up going for Rosh Hashanah lunch. And then it's a family that they know all four years of college who has sort of become their second family in Pittsburgh. So um, I think that's something really special that we do for high holidays. For those um, bigger high, like for the high holidays and for Passover um, and a few other opportunities, we also collaborate with Chabad. And yes, there is an area on campus. I'm, I see it in the chat, so I'm answering it now. There is an area on campus um, that was just, um, adjusted, Eli, you might know the answer to this, but recently it was changed and it's actually even bigger. And so now it goes all through our around our campus and Carnegie Mellon campus. Um, and I can speak a little bit about Orthodox life on campus. It's definitely different depending on the year and depending on the community. Um, and it has expanded. Oh, that's Eli writing it. Yes, Eli knows that. Um, so it's definitely, it, it differs every year. Um, when I was talking about the groups who we send out to different synagogues for high holidays, that's something that our Orthodox students actually, um, they really develop very strong relationships with other um, community members and Jewish ortho Orthodox families and the different synagogues throughout Squirrel Hill, which is sort of the epicenter of Jewish life in Pittsburgh. And that's just about 10 minutes down the road from campus. So we have a lot of students who, um, you know, will find themselves to be really connected with the Orthodox community in Pittsburgh. Um, they'll come for an Orthodox, we offer an Orthodox minion on Friday nights. We have a really great minion group from Carnegie Mellon who pretty, pretty much organizes that every week. Um, and then a lot of our students will actually trek into Squirrel Hill for Saturday and spend Shabbat with um, some different families going to synagogues there for services. So Although Pitt, like the University of Pittsburgh, doesn't have the largest Orthodox community, the fact that you are part of such a big Orthodox and just a general Jewish community in Pittsburgh is really special and it's something that you might not get at other schools. Um, we do have a lot of different, um, more Orthodox synagogues, uh, lots of kosher restaurants. Um, I just heard about a restaurant that is now opening a bagel place. I can't wait. Um, they have a really successful one in Cleveland, which is where I'm from. So when I heard it was coming to Pittsburgh, I'm very excited about that. Um, a lot of a big JCC, um, just a lot of different Jewish communal spaces all throughout Squirrel Hill and throughout Pittsburgh. Um, and it's walking distance. So it might be a little bit of a walk, but it is walking distance from campus. Um, and with your bus pass, it, you, it's a straight shot, 61C. Um, that's the bus route I take. I live in Squirrel Hill, right near one of the biggest Orthodox synagogues, and I am to campus and to Hillel in about 15 minutes by bus. So it's really, really simple. It's um, an easy trip for a lot of people. Um, and there are a lot of kosher food options, not only on campus, but off campus. There's a kosher meal plan as well. Um, and then I'm going to just touch on some of our different communities and different um, sort of like umbrella communities that fall under our umbrella at Hillel JUC. So let me just, I'm pulling up our website so I make sure I get everybody because there are a lot. Um, but Josh mentioned one of our most successful, excuse me, communities, which is Hala for Hunger. Um, and we typically have, I would say about 50 students every Thursday, probably more than that, braiding halas to go out. And those are sold on campus on Friday mornings. Um, and they do a, re a really great job of also having programs and opportunities to learn more about, um, about like food instability and, um, you know, a lot about, about what that looks like specifically in Pittsburgh. Um, we have our 70 Faces magazine, which is a really awesome group. They put out a magazine a couple times a year, but they also do some great programs at Hillel, like paint nights and open mics, and they collaborate with a lot of the other organizations on campus. Um, we have Feish, which is our first year students of Hillel, um, and that is going to be a really great group for people to get to know. They do a mock board, they run their own programs in the first year, and they have some really great, we're actually starting to plan right now, some really, really great opportunities for continued engagement with these first year students that is gonna start sooner than in previous years because we know it looks a little bit different this year. And we wanna make sure that, you know, even though it might not be a traditional way that all of our students are gonna start their school year, that they still feel really connected right from the get go. Um, we have Hillelujah, which is our acapella group. And that actually is not just for Pitt, that's for all of the schools in Pittsburgh. So one of my favorite groups to know because every single student is from a different school. And I think that's really special. 
We have a 21 plus community, so they um, will do different, you know, wine tasting events or um, they'll all meet for a drink before Shabbat, which is a really great way to keep those students involved in a way that feels meaningful and, and right for them. Um, we have the Sedek Coalition, which is, it used to be a program mostly for the, our Jewish students who are um, involved in the School of Social Work at Pitt, but that has now grown a little bit more and is going to, it's really just an opportunity for students who are interested in social justice to take part in some of those programs. Um, we have Panthers for Israel, which is our pro-Israel group on campus. We have some Hebrew speaking opportunities. We have Jewish Greek Life Association, which is a really great program that involves a lot of Jewish students that are in all of the different Greek life organizations and not just those that are um, typically or traditional Jewish um, for fraternities and sororities, but we have students involved in JGLA that are from all sororities and fraternities. Um, and then we have a lot of different programs, our immersive programs with Israel. We have Birthright Israel, we have Onward Israel, and we have a really strong interfaith group um, that leads into our um, Pit Perspectives trip, which is um, an interfaith trip to Israel um, that brings a lot of really important um, vocal student leaders to Israel each year um, to provide a, you know, a really great immersive experience with the hopes that we'll continue a lot more collaborative programming throughout the rest of the school year. And I believe I have just said all of the communities. I hope I didn't miss any. Um, I am going to just, my last thing I wanna talk about are some of the internships or learning fellowships that Josh touched on. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Eli, who is our um, Jewish Student Union, our Hillel at Pitt board president. So the last thing though, we have Jewish Learning Fellowship, which is offered at a lot of different schools throughout their, through their Hillel. So this is a paid, fellowship where you will come uh, for weekly classes. They always have really interesting out there topics. Eli, I don't know if you've been involved in JLF and if you want to touch on that when you speak. Um, but we really try to offer some very just different educational opportunities. We want to make sure our students are, are understanding that their Judaism is a really great context for everything that they're learning and that it's not just something that we practice and something that we do, but that's something that's gonna be a part of us and that really guides the rest of our life. And so we try to really um, emphasize that and, and show our students how, um, how their Judaism and, and how the learning opportunities that we provide are going to carry them after Pitt and, and on their Jewish journey for years to come. Um, we also have Israel 360, which I'm not sure um, how often, if that's an every year program or not, but a similar paid um, learning initiative. And we're doing a book club right now. We have a program called From Margin to Center, a Plurality of Jewish Voices, which is hearing from, um, you know, trying to expand who we are learning from in, Ju in Judaism. And that is it for our Jewish learning cohorts. And I think I covered everything I want to cover right now. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Eli, and then I'm excited to hear some questions. Hi, and uh, my name's Eli. I'm a junior mechanical engineering student, and I am the Pitt Hillel president. And it's a job that I absolutely love to do because Pitt Hillel has been an amazing resource and an amazing um, group that I've been a part of through my time at Pitt. There have been so many different experiences that I've gotten through Hillel, including going to Israel to two times, hopefully going for a third, um, being able to be an intern and getting the Jewish Learning Fellowship where we learned about a lot of different topics um, from like gender and sexuality in the Torah to, you know, how to be a compassionate neighbor and how to be um, like what is Jewish to each one of us. And I think it was really important to kind of explore the different identities that we have in Judaism just because Hillel is a non-denominational organization, so all of the programming that we do really spans through all different types of Jews, no matter um, how religious or conservative you are. So I think that Hillel provides a really great opportunity, not just to learn and have Jewish experiences, but also I've made some of my best friends um, through Hillel. So I lived in Israel for two months through Onward Israel, a pit program, or a Hillel program, and I got to live with other Pitt students and got to hang out with them once I came home too. So I made some of my best friends that summer. And I really think that 
Hillel is such a great community and such a great place where students really get the chance to have their voices heard and have their their uh, inputs weighed heavily. And we, we constantly want student input on what kind of programming they want and how can we make your Jewish experience at Pitt the best one possible. So we really like to make Hillel open an open space for everybody. We like to provide um, time, all of our resources, any interests that people have. We like to create communities to serve those interests. And I think one of the best and most important things that we provide is food because all of our programs have really amazing food and I absolutely love it. Uh, our Hillel building is open on a non-COVID year. Uh, it has open business hours like every day of the week. And I used to live right near Hillel. So I used to like stop in, go to the fridge, grab something and just have it for dinner that night. And like, I would see friends, I would see staff and it's just in a really amazing space for students to be able to make their own and stay involved with Jewish life, no matter uh, how you celebrate and how you define your Judaism. So I want to leave some time for questions. So I'll yield my time. Cool. That was great. Thank you both, Carrie and Eli, for sharing so much. It sounds like such a robust opportunity to explore Jewish identity. And there's so many cool things um, that you can do as a Jewish student and otherwise um, on campus. Um, so yeah, we're just going to, it's just about six o'clock. So we're just going to transition into Q&A and spend the last couple minutes on that. Feel free to unmute yourselves and you can ask questions of any one of Asa, Carrie, Eli, or Josh. Um, and we'll spend the next couple minutes doing that or feel free to use the chat as well. And I just want to remind everyone, you'll get a follow-up email from us towards the end of the, the road trip that has everyone's contact information if you want to follow up individually, um, as well as uh, links to the recordings of these uh, presentations. Any questions? Don't all ask at once, I know, it's, it's crazy. Okay, scanning the chat. All right, well, know that these wonderful professionals and students are available to you if you uh, do have questions. Asa and Carrie put their contact information in the chat as well, so feel free to copy that. Um, and I also, I, I like to end these presentations just by saying, because I, I can, because I sit in an unbiased place, um, but that the, the opportunity to explore, you know, your future in this way and hopefully in the coming months in a more um, upfront and personal way is a really uh, wonderful opportunity and um, it can also be a little bit overwhelming. So we like to remind students that uh, no matter where you choose to spend the next two to four years when you're making that, that decision and writing that chapter of your story, it's going to be um, a great experience and a wonderful time of your life. So whether it's Pitt or somewhere else, um, we're just really excited for um, all of you to, to get to explore this next chapter and expand your horizons in these meaningful and important and hopefully Jewish uh, ways. So uh, we are so glad that you joined uh, the road trip this evening. Uh, we are almost halfway through the month, which means we still have another 15 or 18 schools that we are profiling. So I hope you will continue to check it out. Uh, you can follow us on our socials, which is at four from Baltimore with the number four um, to stay on top of everything that's happening throughout the road trip. And thank you all, especially to Ase and Carrie and Eli and Josh for sharing your evening with us and your student uh, perspective and your professional perspective on why Pitt is such a wonderful place. Um, so with that, we will sign off and say good night and I hope everyone has a great week. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.